Welcome back to another video. Um, so today I wanted to show you uh, a little bit about inductors and wall pedals. Uh, you hear a lot of talk on the internet about changing inductors and how much of a difference it makes in the sound, how it changes everything. So I'll explain it a little bit, but more importantly, I'll show you the difference. Now keep in mind, uh, inductors are measured in millihenries. You don't need to know what that is, but that's just what they are basically. Um, so I have a couple different types. I have the stock one that came in my Dunlop Crybaby. I have uh, a halo inductor and I have a yellow phasal and a red phasal inductor. So we're going to try all those out against the stock and see how much of a difference changing that inductor will make. So basically what we have here is a Crybaby. I took out the inductor there. Uh, the inductor goes right there. I took that out, put a couple wires in its place. So I'm taking those wires over to this breadboard here. So that's the stock inductor. And um, whenever I flip the switch, then it's going to change from stock to the modified. So we'll just compare a few of them you know, against the stock version. Okay, so as we get started here, uh, please keep this in mind. There is gonna be more noise than normal just because we are using the, the breadboard and also the fact that since the back of the pedals opened up and the inductor is not inside this grounded enclosure, uh, there's just gonna be some noise and sometimes you'll hear little pops and, well, I don't have it activated right now, but you'll hear some pops and some things like that. Totally normal, it's just, uh, for demonstrations purposes. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Telecaster in this just because I have new strings on it and it was the most handy to use. Going through the Crybaby wall, uh, going through a Rev G series distortion as well, whenever I kick on some dirt, into a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, and then, um, yeah, and using own hammer and Celestion impulse responses just for fun of it. So, all right, here you go, here's my clean tone. my dirt tone. Let me turn it up a little bit. All right, so as you can see, you'll hear some hiss with the rev. Keep in mind, it's not just the pedal. Uh, it's because of the breadboard and I have noise going into it, which is getting amplified and therefore sounds worse than it normally would. So. Uh, my wah sound, I'm going to do both a clean and a distorted version. So, all right, I'm on the stock version of the uh, inductor. So this is the inductor that came in the pedal. All right, let's turn on some dirt. Enough of that. Let's uh, let's go to uh, let's go to the yellow inductor. All right. So now I have the yellow phasal inductor on one side of the switch. On the other side is stock. So let's start at stock. We'll compare it real quick. Um, basically, what you'll notice the most is in as I change these, the bottom and the top. Sort of, uh, you'll hear that to your ear a little bit more, where it's kind of a different frequency. So let's go. That's stock. Now we're on the yellow phasal. So for comparison's sake, let's uh, let me show you at the bottom sweep and the top sweep. All right, so now we're in the stock position. This is the modified. It's 
Let's go to the very top. Stock. Let's throw a little bit of dirt on the yellow uh, phasal inductor and see if it sounds any different at all. Right now, let's put it on stock first for comparison. And now this is the, the yellow phasal version. That is awfully noisy. All right, let's go to the red phasal uh, as a comparison. All right, stock against the uh, red phasal version. So here we go, stock once again. And again, uh, these are just quick little chord things to kind of, kind of get you a feel, to kind of get, give you a feel rather um, of what it's doing and what it sounds like. So it's not like I'm gonna start pulling out slash riffs or anything. At stock, red phasal. And uh, let's do the same test on the heel toe type of deal. So stock modified. Or I'm sorry, red phasal rather. On the toe, stock, and toe. And uh, of course we gotta throw some dirt on it. So let's throw a little bit of dirt on it. Start out with stock real quick. Red phasal. As you can see, noisy, but it's an effective test. Uh, let's try the uh, the halo. All right, so these phasals are uh, fairly expensive compared to the other ones. So um, I, th I forget exactly how much. I want to say 40 or 50 bucks. I got this from Small Bear. Uh, I think I'm sure you can find them like probably Amazon and wherever you like to buy your pedal parts. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so this is the halo inductor. Uh, actually, it will be in a minute. Right now we're on stock, so real quick, sound clip of that. Halo. And uh, let's do the test again with the heel to toe to compare the two. Okay, we're in stock mode here. Here's the halo. Toe, stock. Halo. So let's compare those two a little bit. Let's put a little dirt on the halo inductor as well. Again, comparing it with stock and then into the halo. All right, and now the halo.
Okay, so that's a sound comparison between a couple different uh, of the popular, and it's not, there's a bunch of different inductors out there, and you can even wind your own if you want to. Uh, but that's a comparison against a couple of the, the more popular ones, I think, from what I can tell anyways. And uh, I'm going to show you a, a site in just a second called Electro Smash. Shows a few graphics of what's going to happen. If you watch my videos, you've seen me point to Ele Electro Smash, which is a fantastic website for this sort of thing. Um, so, all right, let's jump to it over there. All right, so this is electrosmash.com. You've heard me talk about this website before. Love this website for uh, helping others understand what's going on inside of a pedal. Uh, just a wonderful site. Uh, super nice guys, too. All right, so this is the, the effect, basically, the wah-wah. Um, this is the EQ right here. And um, so what it's doing is it's making a peak and kind of shifting that peak a little bit. So um, the different frequency response curves, um, it's really kind of tailored around some parts inside, but also the inductor. So the inductor will affect some of these as well which is why you hear a difference in some of them. Um, not always as drastic as one might hope, but it's still, um, still a difference. All right, so if we look at uh, this graph here, it kind of shows us what's going on. So um, you're making this peak, this big EQ peak, and you're kind of shifting it from uh, around 400 and some hertz to one and a half or give it, what do they say, 1.6K. So you're kind of shifting that uh, by changing that inductor and you can change some other parts around it as well and change that even more uh, but by changing that inductor you're kind of moving that that peak necessarily so maybe you're not at 1.6k maybe you're at 1.5k and maybe you go down to 400 hertz or something um, just depending on the the millihenry of the actual inductor for the most part um, I've heard some people talk about there being more or less noise with inductors, most of the, the good quality inductors are going to be pretty noise free compared to other stuff. Um, if you wind your own inductor, you, you can have some problems with noise, of course, but uh, that's that's all part of the fun of it. So, anyways, I hope you liked the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. If you heard a difference, I know I certainly I could hear a little bit more on the halo than the uh, red and yellow, but still I did hear a little bit of a difference compared to stock. So, hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching. We'll see you probably in, next week with a new video. I got Nam coming up, so I'm not sure what's going on video wise there, but thanks for watching. See you next time. All right, and that's it. That's all, folks.